In this video, we'll talk about ANOVA. ANOVA, which stands for Analysis of Variance, is a generalization of the two sample tests to analyze more than two groups. Somewhat confusingly, ANOVA looks for differences in means. The V in the name comes from something called the Law of Total Variance, which tells you how to break up the total variance in a data set into different components. One way ANOVA is a particular test which assumes that we have multiple groups of data and compares the means of all of them. The null hypothesis is that all the means are equal, and the alternative is therefore that at least one pair of unequal means. It doesn't tell us which pair, just that there is one. Of course, there are lots of examples where you might want to do such a comparison. Generally, whenever you have groups of measurements with some label, you might be interested in comparing the different labels according to some characteristic. The question you might have is, why can't we just do a bunch of t-tests? For example, we could do a t-test for every pair of groups. The problem with this approach is false positives. From the previous video, the false positive rate is alpha, the significance threshold, usually this is 5%. When we do multiple tests, this false positive rate is compounded. To see this, let the false positive rate be alpha, so we don't get a false positive with probability 1 minus alpha. If we do C independent tests, we multiply the probabilities. Then we use the law of total probability to compute the probability of the event not happening. That is, the probability of a false positive is 1 minus the probability of no false positives. The number of trials we have goes up like the square of k, the number of groups. Pause and make sure you understand this formula. Plugging in some numbers, for a sm fairly small number of groups and a standard value of alpha, we have a 40% probability to get a false positive. This is obviously unacceptable. This problem of compounding false positives is called the family-wise error rate. One way ANOVA is a way to avoid this issue, and an example of what's called an omnibus test, testing all the data simultaneously. Here we have three groups of data that we want to test if the means are equal. One way ANOVA requires the following calculations. First, compute the mean for each group. We assume that every group has n measurements. Then we compute the mean using all the data, that is the total mean, often called the grand mean. Then we compute the between group squared differences. This gives, roughly, the spread of the group means around the total mean. The k-1 in front divides by the degrees of freedom. If the total mean is fixed, this means k-1 of the group means are free to vary. Then we compute the within group squared differences. The inner sum measures the spread within each group, and the outer sum adds these spreads. The normalization is again by the number of degrees of freedom. I'll let you think about where this one comes from yourself. The test statistic is the ratio of the between group sum of squares to the within group sum. This is like a generalization of the t statistic, and it follows its own sampling distribution known as the f distribution, which generalizes the t distribution. After computing the test statistic, we calculate p-values and significance as we did in the f-test, but using the f-distribution. One way ANOVA requires a number of assumptions to work. The first is normality, that is, the values measured in each group come from a normal distribution. The next is homogeneity, population variances in each group are equal. Finally, the groups have to be independent. Generally, there are a number of tests you can do on your data to see if the first two assumptions hold. Independence is trickier to detect and fix. A trivial example would be looking at grades in each module on your degree. Of course, the same people will be enrolled in multiple modules, so the groups really aren't independent there. If ANOVA finds that some of the means are different, what then? How do we find the mean which is actually different? The most common way is to run what's called a post hoc test, the most common of those being two keys honestly significant difference test. This test is very similar to the student t test on all pairs, but corrects for the family wise error ensuring that the family-wise error rate stays equal to 5%, or whatever significance level we choose. As usual, there's a library routine to carry out this procedure. Here, we reject the hypothesis that the group means in groups B and C are equal. In fact, here is the code which generated the data I ran the above test on. As you can see, the mean of group B has been shifted. This means the test should have rejected the hypothesis that the means of A and B were equal as well. This could just be a statistical fluctuation, but you should also keep in mind that the family-wise error is controlled by basically reducing the alpha for each pairwise comparison. This means more false negatives, or in other words, a reduction in statistical power. The takeaway from this is that there is a trade-off between the number of groups comparisons you make and statistical power. 